Hello, this is Yellow Recap. Join me as we embark on a riveting journey into the captivating true story of Tetris. Caution! Spoilers ahead! In 1988, we find ourselves at a game fair in Las Vegas. Hank Rogers, a man with a passion for his creation called Gio, tries to attract visitors. But sadly, they're more interested in other games, like Tetris, the iconic puzzle game where players align falling shapes to complete lines. Now, Tetris got its name from Tetra, Greek for four, the number of blocks in each shape and a nod to the creator's love for tennis. Curiosity peaked. Hank gives Tetris a whirl. A bit later, we meet Hank's bank manager friend. Hank shares his Tetris experience. It's addictive, hooking him in five minutes, a game that sticks. The perfect time killer, you know? Hank aims for a loan from Eddie's bank, securing the Japanese gaming license for Tetris, playable on PCs, consoles, and arcades. Eddie's a tad skeptical, given Hank's past flop with Geo, but he believes the Soviet Union sensation can revolutionize gaming. Four years prior, in 1984, Alexei Pajitnov, a computer whiz, tinkers. He crafts a simple game on his old-school PC, and he dubs it Tetris. Initially, it's two brackets forming a square, evolving with friend collaboration into a colorful game. Alexei's out for fun, so he gives it away for free. Lo and behold, Tetris goes viral across the Soviet Union. Only hiccup? The Soviet Union wasn't into the gaming business back then. Robert Stein, an English entrepreneur seeking budget-friendly game licenses to flip, enters. And guess what? He stumbles upon Tetris and is utterly blown away. He quickly offers to acquire the game's license from Alexei. However, Soviet rules require the transaction to go through Elorge, a government tech organization. Stein secures licenses for just $10,000. Now the Maxwell duo, Robert Maxwell, billionaire media magnate, and Kevin Maxwell, Mirosoft's big shot CEO. Stein wastes no time and pitches Tetris distribution to them. Things get even juicier when Hank visits Nintendo. Without missing a beat, he goes straight to the top dog, Hiroshi. Hank unveils the game and convinces Hiroshi to give it a shot. Hiroshi's hooked and promptly dangles a cool $500,000 for the game. But guess what? Hank's got a grander plan. He wants to launch Tetris under his own company, Bulletproof Software, partnering up with Nintendo. Hank's eyeing a hefty $3 million loan from Eddie's bank, $2 million for consoles, and $1 million for arcade machines. Eddie's on board, with a teensy caveat. The interest on the loan's gonna be sky high, and Hank's putting up his house as collateral. Back in Tokyo, Hank spills the beans to his wife Akimi, who doubles as the finance head in their company. Akimi's got reservations naturally. This plan's a high-stakes gamble, but Hank's unwavering in his belief in Tetris's success, and he eventually sways her to his side. In Moscow, Alexei had an unexpected visitor, Valentin Trifonov, who claimed KGB ties. Trifonov spilled the beans that KGB planned to block Tetris. It seems workers were so engrossed in the game that they forgot their duties. Meanwhile, across the ocean, Kevin rings up Hank, you see, Hank holds the Japanese license for Tetris, but Kevin's got news. He's licensed the arcade version to Sega in Japan, leaving Hank's company with just the PC and console rights. A quick call to Hiroshi, and Hank's advised to head to Nintendo's US branch in Seattle for backup. He arrives and gets greeted by the bigwigs, Minoru Arakawa and Howard Lincoln. Hank's mission? Check out Nintendo's shiny new toy, the Game Boy. He's got this hunch that if Mario can skyrocket Game Boy sales, Tetris can take it to millions, all ages included. While Hank's cooking up plans, Kevin, who's now working with Atari, aims to snag Tetris's handheld license. Quick as lightning, Hank jets off to the Soviet Union for a chat with the game's creator. Ah, uh, but here's the twist. This is the Cold War era, and the Soviet Union isn't exactly America's biggest fan. Hank's gotta brave that atmosphere to get the handheld rights. As he lands, he's greeted by a translator named Sasha. Off they go to meet Nikolai Belikov, the head honcho at Elorg, the organization controlling the first Tetris license. Hank lays it all out, and guess what? Nikolai drops a bombshell. They've never licensed Tetris to anyone. Hank walks Nikolai through the license trail, Stein to Elorg, then Mirrorsoft, and finally, Hank snagging the Japan region rights. Nikolai's skeptical, suspecting the game's a knockoff, but Hank's determination sways him, earning a revisit promise for the next day. True to his word, Hank's back the next morning. This time, the crew's all there. Nikolai, Alexei, the game's mastermind, Valentin and his aide, plus surprise guests, Stein and Kevin, both keen on licensing talks. Surprise twist, Tetris was only officially licensed for PC, nothing more. Arcades, consoles, and handhelds? Nope, not mentioned. They set up another meeting for Hank the next day. Outside, Hank catches Alexei and scores a ride, edging closer to a breakthrough. A dinner invite follows, building rapport between the two programmers turned game makers. Meanwhile, Valentin spills the beans to Robert, offering a hand in the license quest for a sweet $400,000, payable post-success. Robert keeps Kevin in the dark on this deal. That evening, Hank visits Alexei's abode, sharing family photos, digging into dinner, and bonding over their shared programming and game creation roots. 
Alexei reveals his original Tetris on an old-school computer, inspiring the shift from clearing single lines to whole rows. Post-visit, KGB ambushes Hank on his way to the hotel, issuing threats and making him skedaddle out of the Soviet Union. Simultaneously, Soviet embassy reps pop into Bulletproof's Tokyo office, advising Akemi to urge Hank's return to avoid trouble. Back in his hotel room, Hank discovers chaos left behind by KGB searches. Enter Sasha, bearing unsettling news. KGB views Hank as a potential threat. They fear foreign acquisition of Soviet property could spell the Union's downfall. Sasha tries to end the tension with a kiss, but Hank's marriage keeps him distant, promptly asking Sasha to leave. Next day, Hank calls home, his daughter Maya asking him to attend her upcoming concert. He updates Akimi to reach out to their lawyer, fax the Mirasoft contract to Elorg, and draft a new deal for Tetris's handheld rights. The trio, Hank, Stein, and Kevin, head to Elorg to hash out more Tetris business. Stein inks a new arcade license, but handheld and console rights remain elusive. Hank sits with Nikolai, proving his authenticity with the Japan region Tetris license. Soon, Nikolai's on his way to meet Kevin, but Valentin intervenes, revealing the Soviet Union's preference for Mirrorsoft. Nikolai capitulates, selling global Tetris handheld rights for a cool $1 million to be paid in a week. Nikolai's ulterior motive surfaces. A secret chat with Hank reveals his wish to hand Hank the Tetris license, giving him a week to match Kevin's bid with Nintendo. Nikolai trusts Hank's integrity above others. Exiting Elorg, Alexei awaits. A cab ride ensues during which Alexei unveils KGB surveillance from Hank's arrival, outing Sasha as a KGB member. Tragedy strikes as the KGB learns of Nikolai's plan, torturing him to halt it. Finally, Hank's Tokyo bound. A fax from Nikolai arrives bearing somber news. Tetris's journey has been cut short. Adding to Hank's troubles, a secret photo surfaces, showing him and Sasha kissing. Valentin's fingerprints are all over this. Blackmail in play. Nikolai's forced to bend, derailing Hank's Tetris plans. Meanwhile, Nintendo officials ring Hank up, delivering a bombshell. Nintendo's teamed up with Robert and Kevin, leaving Hank gobsmacked. Frustration escalates as Akimi and Maya return from a concert he missed. His world spinning into chaos. Lost license rights. Potential Nintendo lawsuit. Collateralized home at risk. And family turmoil. Over in another corner, Nikolai, freshly tortured, turns to Alexei's abode, carrying a note of salvation. The plan's risky. Deliver it to Hank and hope for a turnaround. Alexei stages an office fire to buy time, faxing the note to Hank. On a different path, Kevin seeks $1 million from his father Robert to snag the handheld Tetris rights. Robert, craftily having already bribed Valentin, denies the need for a payment, citing his ties with Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. Everything's part of Robert's grand scheme. Hank confronts Nintendo's Howard and Minoru with Alexei's note. It's a game changer. Mirosoft didn't secure the Tetris license and Hank's urge to counter offer. Atari's grip on Tetris in the US is shaky too, paving the way for a fresh opportunity. Hank urges the duo to join him in Moscow with a license purchase contract, aiming for a deal. The stakes escalate dramatically. Alexei, under suspicion of treason, faces expulsion from his home and office. Valentin's threats extend to Alexei's children, making it clear he won't hesitate to harm them. As Hank, Howard, and Minoru land in Moscow, they converge with Nikolai, accompanied by Sasha, and offers put on the table. $5 million up front with Nintendo handling marketing and production, and $1 per unit sold going to Elorg. Nikolai's on board, but Sasha puts up a fight. Tetris, in her eyes, is government property. Nikolai's forced to pause negotiations. Simultaneously, Valentin blackmails Robert for $1 million within 24 hours if he wants the Tetris license. At Mirrorsoft's office, a brawl erupts when Stein learns Kevin cut a separate deal behind his back. Tempers flare and fists fly. Things get even more tangled as Robert and Kevin jet to the Soviet Union to meet Gorbachev. Robert's eagerness to secure the game falls flat. Gorbachev views them as outsiders, labeling Robert greedy. Amid this chaos, Hank, Howard, Minoru, Robert, and Kevin all gather to make offers. Hank and Nintendo's proposal promises benefits for Elorg and the Soviet Union. The power play intensifies. As investigations unfold, a shocking truth emerges. Mirosoft teeters on the edge of bankruptcy, incapable of outbidding Nintendo and Hank. Robert's relentless pressuring Nikolai to accept his deal. But out of the blue, Nikolai flips the script. He gives Robert a beating, then swiftly signs Hank and Nintendo's offer. Valentin, his accomplice, and Sasha storm Elorg, exposing the truth. Valentin uncovers Robert's empty pockets. His promised money is mere air. Sasha also spills the beans on Valentin's bribe. Kevin's left disillusioned, his father making unilateral decisions and secretly greasing Valentin's palms. Valentin still offers help, but at a cost. 50% ownership of Tetris. The chase heats up with KGB agents and Valentin hot on Hank and company's tail. Alexei lends a hand, aiding their escape. Sasha tips off Gorbachev about Valentin's sinister Tetris motives. A pulse-pounding car chase unfolds, 
Climaxing at the airport, Alexei's maneuvering buys them time. At the airport, Hank and Alexei part ways, making a pact that Alexei's efforts won't go unnoticed. Valentin and his squad close in, scouring planes bound for Tokyo. Unbeknownst to them, Hank takes an alternative flight, throwing them off track. The tension's electric. The climax is breathtaking. Valentin's plane-chasing endeavor gets upended by Sasha and her agents, who apprehend Valentin's corrupt gang on Gorbachev's orders. Back in Tokyo, Hank stages a heartfelt surprise for his wife and daughter. Maya's living room solo concert becomes an atonement for his missed attendance. Akimi's in for a surprise, too, as Hank hands her a $5 million bulletproof software agreement from Nintendo. In 1989, during Christmas, Game Boy takes the market by storm. Tetris steals the show, leading to $110 million in sales and continued exponential growth. Alexei also receives a Game Boy gift from Hank, along with tickets to San Francisco for his family. Hank fulfills his promise and together, they establish the Tetris Company. Stein never got over losing Tetris, but continued licensing other games. A twist of fate sees Robert Maxwell's empire crumble. The man goes bankrupt, bezels $900 million from his own pension fund. Robert's mysterious death raises questions, while his son Kevin faces arrest for looting his father's retirement fund, and Hank appoints his daughter Maya as the new Tetris Company CEO. With over 500 million copies sold, Tetris cements its place as one of history's most beloved games. Congratulations! Click on the subscribe button if you like more content like this and help me to reach my goal by September. Thank you for watching.